This is the clarinet that Mozart would have expected to hear when he wrote for it, as he did in what I just played, which is a bit of his Concerto K488 in A major for orchestra and piano. Now, the thing about this concerto is that the clarinet in this replaces the oboes. It's scored for flute, two clarinets, two bassoons, two horns and strings, with of course the solo piano. It shows that for Mozart, at this particular time, the clarinet was capable of taking on a very significant part in his orchestral works. But that wasn't always the case. The clarinet developed. So what was it developing from? This is a five-keyed clarinet. And you might think it reminds you a little bit of another instrument that quite probably you've encountered. This is what's called a recorder. And it's similar to this clarinet. It hasn't got any keys on it, of course, has it? But um, it's also very fundamentally different in a way that I'll now explain. One of the things about a recorder is it's got two registers. You can play in this register. And if you want to go into the upper register, it's very easy to do that. You just put some fingers down. So I can play a scale. The clarinet is like that, and the problems that you had to solve in order to make a, an effective clarinet were similar. You had to learn how to get between the lower register and the upper register. But if I try and do on this clarinet, the five key clarinet, what, um, without using the keys, what I just did on the recorder, it doesn't work because... <laughs> You can hear there's a huge gap. Whereas that was the next note up in the recorder, it isn't on the clarinet. So what they did was they put a key to get one, high, one note higher. You can see that that shortens the tube. By the way, what we're doing when we're moving our fingers on and off the keys is just shortening the tube. When I've got lots of fingers down, it's a long tube, and as I take my fingers off, what happens is that the tube gets shorter, so effectively. So it's just a way of shortening the tube. So I shorten it again by opening another hole. And if I now put all my fingers down, I'm still missing a note. And you can hear that we need another note. So what they did was they put another key on that we do that. And what that does is it lengthens the tube slightly. So we get a lower note in between and because I've got a spare finger here. And so why we have keys on the clarinet is because we haven't really got enough fingers to do the job. That's why they put keys on it. Anyway, so this is the five key clarinet. And it was the staple instrument for quite some time. I've played later music on this. I played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony on this. And Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is quite a complicated sort of piece of music. So you can play more complicated music. But as time went on and the music got more complicated, it became much less possible to achieve the results that the composers were asking for. We now know that Stadler, who was Mozart's virtuoso clarinet player, played an instrument which went down further even than the clarinet does. The clarinet goes down quite a long way. It goes down to there. But Stadler thought, and Mozart also thought, it should go da da. And so what they did was they put more keys on, so as, as well as going and you can hear that you could go right the way down to the bottom of the instrument. So this is what's called a basset clarinet and it's got these extra notes and here are the, are the uh, extra keys that you play just with your thumb. You have to develop a good thumb technique. Some people have them, some people don't. But um, anyway, so you need a good thumb technique but it's usually just for reaching the low notes. But I 
say that the Mozart concerto asked me questions, asked me to play certain sorts of things with certain sorts of nuance, which I felt I couldn't do on a simple five keyed clarinet just with these, this extra bit here. So what I did was I added three extra keys. And the reason is that the notes that occur in the concerto, there's an E flat, a C sharp, these ones. Those three notes are very bad unless you have the keys to do it. And of course, people have got round that tremendously well. I mean, I would hardly say that the people who play on simple clarinets with low extension don't do it well, but they don't do it well enough for me and my vision of the Mozart clarinet concerto. I don't want to play it on a modern instrument like this one. You can see that the modern instrument has gone well beyond what the simple clarinet is, the, the five key clarinet. So I want to keep the character of the uh, early instrument without putting all of this guff on it because I don't need that for the Mozart concerto. And so I've done the minimal requirement for Mozart's clarinet. Now there is another little bit of history that I should tell you, which is that after we had made this instrument in 1984, Pamela Poulin discovered a sketch of Stadler's actual Bassett clarinet in a program note in Riga. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon your point of view, you can't really tell exactly what the key work is on the top of the instrument. You can tell that there are uh, keys to make the instrument go down low, but you can't tell what the key work is on the top of the instrument. And a contemporary account said that Mozart's clarinet, Stadler's clarinet, was almost overloaded with keys, but you can't see them on the drawing. What you can see is the fact that the, it didn't go straight down, it turned round and had a bulbous bell. And so subsequently, everybody who's made a Bassett clarinet has put a bulbous bell on it. And I did in fact wonder whether or not to get a bulbous bell put on my clarinet, because we now know that Stadler had one. And I spoke to uh, uh, my friend Guy Cowley, who makes instruments, and he makes basic clarinets with this bulbous bell on it. And I said, do you think it would make uh, much difference if I put, could you put a bulbous bell on my basic clarinet so that it would be more a la mode? And so he said, well, I could, but actually the low notes on your instrument are quite resonant enough. As my children might have said earlier in their lives, they're well resonant. So, the end of the concerto. Uh.